Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Brooks of Facing Brooks Law Offices, and you are back with another episode of the Empower Hour brought to you by the Empower Plant. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited about this week's guest. She's one of my sister friends. Uh, she'll explain what that means, but I have known this woman. She is active in the community. She walks her talk every day. In fact, before we got on here, I was like, I'm surprised you had time for me today because she is on everything. She'll tell you all about it. She's in the community. She's helping everybody. She's helping people behind the scenes a lot of the time, but she's always there. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Doctor slash pastor Judy Mandrell, welcome. Thank you so very much, Dana. I am so excited to be here with one of my mentors, someone I greatly admire. So thank you all so very much for having me on. Ooh, thank you. I want to talk about everything. I want to talk about Sister Girl Network because um, this started for me. My involvement in it started, um, seemed like it was during the pandemic <laughs> and we started doing on Zoom. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I don't want one more damn Zoom today. I am Zoomed out. And then I, I looked and I saw on my calendar. I'm like, let me just turn this on. And I remember I was in my driveway on the first one. I sat in that car an hour and a half. I could not get out. I was so charged up. I wanted to get out and do everything. The women who are involved in this and the things that they are doing for other women and girls, super turned on about it. Uh, Kia, I can't wait for you to learn more. Do you know um, uh, Dr. Mandrell? I know of her. Okay. We've never met. notorious Dr. Mandrell. Yes, yes. At FAMU especially. Okay. Yeah, Kia is our uh, public relations manager here. And, uh, and she joins us most every week. So welcome back, Kia. Uh, we've got Betsy Brown, Maverick. Maverick, <laughs> come in. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm Iceman. Ice, 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 ice. 100%. <laughs> um, last week, because Betsy and I are both from the Panhandle. And last week, I was so jealous. I don't know if you were. Every single uh, friend from over there was posting all their Blue Angel uh, pictures. But you put it to us. You brought it. You brought your A game with the Blue Angels today. Yeah, you don't even need to be there because I'm here. So you're here to buzz the tower. Right, right. And I can do it. So <laughs> welcome, Dr. Judy. It's so nice to meet you. It's a pleasure meeting you as well, Betsy and Kelly. I'm so excited to meet you all. Well, yes, um, we are so excited to have you on. I have uh, lots of questions. So I just looked at your website and I can't wait to hear more about you and what you guys are doing. Great, yeah. great. Um, Dr. Mandrell, tell us, Dr. Judy, Pastor Judy, I, I told you I was gonna call you all those things because she's me all got them. a lot of monikers, everybody knows her. Tell me how you spend your time. Because I know about Sister Girls, but you do a whole bunch of things. So just if nobody knows you, describe yourself to us. Okay, I am, uh, I'm a lot of fun. Uh, I have been married 41 years come October. I'll be married 41 years in October. I spend my time reading in church uh, when I'm not working in the community uh, and with my family. And that's, and, and I love reading. I love reading and, and watching uh, movies and motor, like Patch Adam. Patch Adam is my favorite movie uh, in the whole wide world. Also New Jack City and uh, all the Rockies, all of Death Wish, uh, the American unsung hero. So mo movies that's motivational and I love to laugh. Uh, yes. I love laughing. So that's, that's pretty much how I spend my time. Okay. And I started back walking and um, I, I like that. Now tell us about the Sister Girl Network. Okay, so I've always seen myself, one of my favorite, other than my mom being my hero, my mom has always served the community, she and my dad, and I watched that as a kid. So I told her what I do, I can't help it because I was raised that way. This is how I've been all my life. However, Harriet Tugman also became a, a, a lady that I just admired. So I just read everything about Harriet. And then Mary McLeod Bethune, and. So Journal Truth, and I just felt like these women was all powerful women who were bringing uh, freedom to everybody, yeah. right? And so I felt like I felt like God called me to be an evangelist. I majored in social work because I felt like I could save the world. And one of the things that I believe in, I believe in just strong women, and mm -hmm. seeing so many different women and the different things that we had to bring 
I always imagine all women, black, white, rich, and poor, coming together to make a change in the world. I felt like we could do it. I, I feel like if the women get together, everything will be okay. 100%. And I've always, I always felt like that, right? I have five sisters, and but I've always felt if we can do that. When I was growing up, I thought we was rich. Um, so I would take clothes out of our house from my mom and my sisters and take them over to the project and give them away. Uh, my dad had a, a, a cow kill and put all the meat in the freezer. I put the meat in a, 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 a pillowcase and took it over to the project and handed out all the steaks. And I just felt like we were rich mm -hmm. and that we were supposed to do that. But I felt like the women was going to make the biggest change, uh, would, would cause the biggest change. Why is that? So, uh, maybe because I saw my mom and so many women do so much. And I felt like my, my, my dad and my brothers, they were always supportive of us, telling us what we can do and what we're gonna be. And my dad told me one time, he said, Judy, I wouldn't be surprised that you become the president of the United States of America. He said, you would put a big change in here. And I was just so, and matter of fact, um, Dana, you look like one of my best friends from high school. Her name is Samantha Bird. She's an attorney as well down in Fort Myers. And we, we was bust. The, the black people from my neighborhood was bust to our high school called South Plantation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hated that name, uh, South Plantation, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And we became great friends and we were talking. I said, what if you could see a bunch of black and white women coming together, just changing the world? Cause I felt, I, I guess because my mom always told us how strong we were, how smart we are. My dad just, and my dad and my brother was always, Judy, you're going to do this. And my other sisters, all of my sisters are just powerful women. And I just felt like it is our responsibility, Dana. But then I knew this, I couldn't do it by myself. And so my prayer has always been, God, connect me with women who, who see what I see. Or women who won't be afraid to give of themselves. Women who won't be afraid to, to just get with other women and pull down things, then all this racism and hatred and, um, because of whatever, you know? Dead in service. Uh, yeah, I was like, this, this don't make sense. I said, but if the women can stop fighting each other, I think we can change this world. Yes. So that's, I believe that. I really yes. do believe that. I, I believe if the women can get together and, and, and encourage each other, even if we disagree, just get together. That's right. And so... For my birthday in 2019, February 2019, I said I was going to have a birthday party. And I invited all the women in the city. I got on Facebook and said, I'm having a birthday party. Everybody's invited. And I didn't think that many people were going to show up. I, I figured we'd have about 50 or 60. It ended up being over 450 women. Get out. Who attended my birthday party. And Larice <laughs> Thomas. She, she was at um, New Mount Zion with Pastor Elwood. She called and they were like, you're not going to be able to have that. Uh, what, what is it called? The seated room, Nisha Harris, or the sitting room? That's, that's why I was... Uh-huh. That that's why I was going to have it at. But the room can only sit like 50 people. Oh, yeah, and you she, pulled that out. Yeah, Sharon Barron and, 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 uh, Sharon Barron and uh, Gina Gardner, they said, you... you you can't, you can't have it here. I said, well, maybe we can hang outside. They're like, no, you can't. So we went to his church. We had on all black with pearls. And Dana, uh, my sister from Scotland surprised me and came. My mom, my sisters, my aunts, my cousin. But it was over 450 women in that place. The, yeah, mayor's, yeah. the mayor's wife, um, um, Tiffany Baker, Jessica Yeary. Uh, so many women from the homeless shelter. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just everybody, all just all my friends. I mean, I ain't know a lot of them, but they came, right? <laughs> and I told them, we're friends, we're sisters. Um, and then we had in August where, where the women would come. I wanted the women just to come in August at TCC. I rented the room and um, I thought they were going to give it to me for free, but they didn't. Because uh, I'm like, hey, but it didn't matter. My husband said, do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, and then I did it again in December with a big party. Over 400 people kept showing up. And then I thought about it. 
Okay, and then different people, different women said, I want to hook up with you. What, what is your vision? What, what do you see? So I had an opportunity to sit and talk to over 60 women. Uh, and I didn't plan any food the first time. And Christy Henry said, so Judy, what, what's your menu? What's your menu, Pastor Man Mandrell? I said, menu? She said, you're going to feed the people? I said, I hadn't thought about it. What? I said, we got I said, I said, I didn't have any money to feed them. She said, no, no problem. We'll get it together. And she and some other women got together. And uh, she said, what you like? I said, like fried chicken and collard green. I mean, that's what we had. <laughs> it was so food. And Gina, Gina, Gina sat with me for over two hours at Coos Bean and listened to my vision. Then she gave me all these people to contact. And they just started showing up. And they haven't shown up ever since. And the mission is, um, and, and what we are, we're, we're not really another organization. We unite organizations. We bring women of different groups who already have organizations. So we're like a hub and we bring all these women together, all these different women groups together. We're, we're like mm -hmm. the service station that, that comes. So I tell people when they ask for the sister girl, you're going to get uh, Dana Brooks and Empowerment. You're going to get uh, uh, uh everybody uh, the show i was on the tightest two women you, you're going to get all these different women group but we come together because i believe we have to break the barrier uh, and mm -hmm. and we we just have to and and for the most part we come we fellowship and we get to know each other that's the first part and we just received our 501c3 so <laughs> yeah i was so excited about that because in like retreats but the women don't have to pay Right. They mm -hmm. come and it's, it's we first come, first serve, and, and we just make it big and bring women uh, together. And I envision a world where inclusive women and we're nurturing and we're empowering and we're inspiring each other. Because uh, I, I believe that if women, once women come together and we're empowered, we change our community. Yeah. Uh, and you've got to make it affordable and accessible if you want young women to come up under you. And yeah. continue this. This can't be a one-off. Um, uh -uh. I participated in some of those, you know, as a woman leader, a, a bunch of other women leaders getting together and trying to do something. And um, if you don't, it's like a church. If you don't have the young people coming up behind it to support it, it's not sustainable. You it's not on everybody. Yeah. Um, but but I'm so glad to have you here. I want to I want to get with our panel real quick and see what kind of things they want to talk about and any comments or questions they want. I want to start with you, Kia. Yay. Hi, Dr. <laughs> Mandra. How are you? Hey, Kia. It's a pleasure meeting you. You as well. Um, so I do know some background about you before we had you on, but um, one thing in particular that has always stood out to me about you is that you earned a scholarship to actually go to FAM into the business program, and you turned it down to do social work. Um, that's one of the reasons, too, why I love Dana, because, you know, it takes a, a strong heart to go into something like that and get paid so little, um, but you are giving your all. What made you make that choice from business, especially during that time, because business was booming in the 70s, right? So why would you switch from business? I, I think I know why, but telling the public, why did you switch from business and turn that down and go into social work? And what I did felt, your parents think about it? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, 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 actually, my mom and dad, um, they, they allowed us to make our own decisions. So when I sat down with my parents and I, and First of all, turning down the scholarship was not what my dad said he expected to hear. <laughs> he wanted me to go to business. But I told him that I felt like I needed to learn more about the social justice and the mm. different program of people heart and dealing with uh, 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 the life of people and helping change lives. And I told him I felt like I needed to go to school to learn more just to dig in more. I felt like growing up, I saw so much, but as I told you, I, I feel like I'm some type of Harriet Tugman with some Jesus on the inside and I'm supposed to help change the world, right? And so I felt like I had to go to social work. I had to go to social work. And I always said I wasn't gonna marry another social worker. 
two social Uh-oh. workers weren't going to be able to get married because we weren't going to have anything. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, that, that was always right there in my mind. But I felt like, you know, that I, I had to go there because it's just some, I had to learn more. Mm-hmm. I, I, I had a lot of experience, but I wanted to learn some book things. I, I needed to learn about the ecosystem. I need to learn all of these different systems. So I felt so I can offer, be real rounded when I go out to save the world. And I've always felt like I was going to have this big office way. I didn't think I was going to be in Tallahassee. I thought I was going to be in Miami or New York or Orlando. Right, or right. Sky, skyscraper office, right? And um, I, I just imagine, I, I've imagined all my life me really helping women come, really come forward. And I think too, my family, when we grew up, like I said, I thought we were rich, but in my neighborhood, we had women who were single parents. We had mm-hmm. women I saw struggling to make in me. And that's why I would take stuff out of my mom's house and give it to other families. Cause I felt we could easily replace it. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and that's why I went to so- school of social work. And I believe even to this day, I just, and, and I'm forever learning about people. Uh, people, my heart. Um, all people, all people, everybody, you know, um, and, and that's how I went to social work because I believe, and I believe that I've, I've helped change a whole lot of lives. Uh, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you know what? It takes a special person to go into social work because believe it or not, it's the lowest paid profession. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to take anything from a teacher. Trust me, I don't. But but social work for something you need a, a quite a credential for, mm-hmm. it's, right. it's the lowest paid uh, profession. And so it's almost like, it. I call it enhanced volunteerism. You almost have to <laughs> have your own money or be married to somebody or partnered up with somebody who can, you know, put a roof over your head sometimes because uh, it is. It's 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 basically like volunteerism on steroids, but it can turn into other things. <laughs> I tell people I'm a social work, worker with a law degree. I figured out how to make money doing it. I exactly. Out, exactly. I I make money helping people. And if you want to, uh, you could do that. I don't want to discourage people. I, I'm, we make jokes about it all the time or whatever, but almost every nonprofit is headed up by somebody who's got a social work background. Yeah. Um, they are informing policy in hospitals, uh, health care provision. Um, at the legislative level and all of the bureaucratic levels. So it is a real career, but it takes a special person to do it. Um, And it's just a servant's heart. It really is. It's somebody who just says, you know, either I'm struggling, you probably are too, let's help each other, or I struggled and I got here, but let me help you get here too. It's just somebody Mm -hmm. who, I I guess it's just the ultimate empath. Yeah. And then that's where the leadership part comes in. Um, You know, I have... (laughs) A degree in uh, educational leadership, Christian leadership. And the reason being is because I believe that even with that, as you were saying, Dana, I believe that my job is to help people see further than where they are. Right. You know, and so I, li- I like to teach uh, folks, go get your degree or read, 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 read. My sister get Cindy. A get a mentor. Yeah. Out. yeah. So that's, that's, that's what it's all about. And sometimes when I'm looking at different cases and living at this, watching things, I said, hey, I should have gone to law school. Now, my uncle, Henry Hunter, is a lawyer. And he was like, he wanted me to go to law school. And he told me that I would have to give up only two and a half years. But I was so busy in the church, I didn't see it at the time. Right? I thought I would lose something from the church, and I wouldn't have. Well, what are you should- doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I graduated law school three do- three days before I turned forty. So don't start with me. Wow. Okay. Miss Be- uh, Miss Brown, are you here? Here. Mm. All right, lady. What do you think? It's my it's turn. Your, it's your turn. Okay. You always start with Kia, and <laughs> I, I, I like I her better. Good. It's just <laughs> it's only because I like her better. Right. I'm glad you <laughs> glad you finally admitted it. Um, uh, so, I, and I I knew. I was like, I'm not even going to ask about FAMU because Kia will cover that and certainly she'll go first. So I don't even have to bring it up. <laughs> but I, um, so I noticed, Doctor, through your, your comments, we have two things in common that stand out to me. And the first is Patch Adams, because I love that movie. Love and it. it's so 
joyful, fun, inspiring, life-giving movie. And um, so I just had to point that out because I love it too. Everybody should go oh, yeah. watch it. What do you love about it? Because I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask uh, Pastor Judy what she loved about it. What do you love about it, Betsy? Well, it's okay. So it's, first of all, it's Robin Williams, who is hilarious. Yes. But it's also, it's one of those movies that's like heavy on um, character development. And you see the characters go through different stages and, and then they come together when they reach a certain stage. And then something really, really, really sad happens, but I'm not going to spoil it. No, but, right. um, but, but then there's redemption at the end and, you know, you just leave having experienced all the emotions, which mm -hmm. I dig that. So that's why I love it. But I'd love to hear why, why Dr. Mandrell loves it so much too. The reason why I love this so much, Betsy, is because he made everybody wish, wish come true. And you remember the little old lady wanted to just get in a big tub of spaghetti? Mm. And he, he, had, he was an unorthodox intern or doctor. He was striving to be a doctor. He was so unorthodox, but he made people dream. He went against the grain. And, and he, and he it, it was more, not necessarily medicine that got the people well, but getting them to laugh and providing things that they wanted. And, and I'm sitting there like, I could do that. Yeah. You know, I could just, I can do that. I said, if I run into somebody and they want a big thing of spaghetti, I'm gonna go buy all the spaghetti. And I told my husband that mm -hmm. I'm gonna get all the spaghetti and I'm gonna put that person in the tub. And, and that's part of my, what I need to my calling. But we find out what somebody wanted it could make them happy. I like to do that. Yeah. I, I, I like, um, there was one lady, she was diagnosed with cancer and she called and she said, Judy, can I just spend the day with you? And that's mm -hmm. when she told me. And I said, sure. And she said, uh, and when we got together, she was telling me, but we laughed and we had so much fun and we laughed and we laughed. And it was a little old lady who lived in my, my neighborhood. And, um, she lived, I think, maybe a year. Uh, my family was on here. I think it was a year later, and we were we were on our way to uh, Alaska, and I we were supposed to be there that one day. I shipped and the cruise ship and leave immediately, but I postponed and rearranged my schedule to attend her funeral because her sister, her daughter, said she would just love to have you here. You know, they tried to give me some of her ashes, but I'm like, no, I, don't, I am caring about the ashes around with me. Now, y'all, y'all, y'all don't have to keep <laughs> doing the ashes. <laughs> ashes to ashes, keep the ashes over there. <laughs> I got my whole thing planned out. I'm going to have like a buffet. Like a buffet. You're you doing can, ashes? No, yeah, I'm doing ashes. And then you just oh. get some if you want some. Do it. You keep them, scatter them, whatever. Oh, okay. And then my daughter will get whatever's left over. She wants it. You know, I just thought, you know, everybody wants a piece of me. Let's go get it. I'm just, I'm going to keep your books. <laughs> I'm going to keep your books and your pictures. <laughs> not gonna uh, get I figure once, once I'm kind of gone, it's of the earth. So y'all do what you want to do, but just don't plant me in the ground. I don't want anybody to feel obligated to come visit me in a in a place i just i, uh, I don't know I'm, I'm weird about it i probably will change my mind i don't know i guess we all evolve um so that's uh, why i like patch adam uh that said that was and dana that was and, and kia that was my reason for liking liking patch adam and y'all saw uh move move oh, that bus that. did y'all remember the show move that bus i forgot what it's called what is it uh he always said move that bus and so they what they did they renovated houses Oh for yes. people who were, you remember oh, that? Yeah. That's him. That I became my that. favorite show too. And okay. so I told my husband, one day, sweetheart, I'm gonna be able to go somewhere and uh help um, help people and we're gonna come together and we're gonna be able to provide people better houses. You know, you just take their house and make it better. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, probably that can do so much to improve somebody's quality of life. You know, just spending. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know, a stream home it's makeover. Thousand dollars yeah. sometimes it's ten. Um, Maverick, you got any other questions? I don't want to be accused of giving you short shrift here, or like you me too much, Dana. Right, uh, too late for that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, no, I another thing that you said, Doctor Mandrell, was when you were growing up that you received a lot of support from your father yeah 
that, that kind of struck a chord with me because my dad is um, for his generation, but for really for any generation, a feminist uh, at it. his heart. He has three daughters and he thinks that we are, you know, there's nothing we can't do. There's nothing, in, you know, in the world that a man could do better than one of his daughters. And so I always <laughs> enjoyed that support growing up and it, it, it affected me. I credit him with, you know, who I am today. Um, but I wanted to ask you, do you feel like that uh, having having that support from a man in your life uh, empowered you as a woman? And, and if so, how do we get more men to be to feminists and be proud of it? Love that. Great question. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think he really validated me in, in that aspect. My dad showed up to everywhere, you know, along with my mom. My mom is a strong black woman. I mean, she's strong. And my dad pushed her everywhere. He he made sure she was on top. He made sure she was right there. And with the girls, he did the exact same thing. And he said that he wanted us to know if another man never said anything, that he was proud to be our father, that he was proud. And that did something to me. My, my, dad, my dad was like, uh, to all of us, he, he, he would say, you all are strong. You all, you all can do this and you all are going to be this. You are the top in your class. You you have something to say. And my dad and mom, it, it was like, say what you want to say. They may not agree with you, but say it. And my dad would always say, you have a voice, Judy. You have a voice and your voice have a right to be heard. He, and, but he always taught us, be respectful. He yeah. said, be re he said, but do it. Do it. And anything my father said, I believe it. Right? I was playing baseball outside and I got hit, Dana, in the head with the bat. My father, I had a big knot on my head. He didn't take me to the hospital. It might be what's wrong with me today. Oh. He didn't take me to the hospital. <laughs> right? You know what he said? He said, Judy, I've been hit in the head so many times. He said, it's only gonna hurt for a little while. Take, take, take the um <laughs> Tylenol and go to sleep. I'm going to sleep. My head was just starving. But my dad said I was going to be okay. So my dad said, it was true. right? I closed my hand in the door. And I think this, this finger here is still, I think it was broken. But my dad said, Judy, my hand has been slammed in the door so many times. Do you see my hand? I said, yes. He said, you're going to be okay. <laughs> and, that was, and that's what he taught us, you know? And he said, people don't support you. You don't worry about it. You don't worry about it. He said, you have a family that's going to support you. And, and my mom, she, she was like, I mean, they just made us, and I'm 63. And to this day right here, I give who I am, I give the credit to my mom and my dad because they just made us believe that we belong where we are. They had us to prepare. We had to read. We had to study. And I, and, and, and then my husband is the exact same way. I marry a man who supports me from here to there, and I get to do what I do because of him. We've been married almost 41 years, but he pushed me. He's in the audience clapping. He's everywhere with me, um, supporting me, saying, Judy, you good, you know? And he'll text me, and so he just walked in the door, but sometimes he'll say, he'll say things like, I am who I am because I married you. Oh, hey, you stop. Made stop, stop talking. Oh, okay. I got two. Questions. I knew Betsy was going to start. <laughs> Don't do First it, question. Betsy. Don't do it. Don't do it, Betsy. First question, uh, what motivates your uh, selection of glasses, glassware? But secondly, <laughs> this 41 year marriage you've had with this man who just texts you to let you know he's so glad you chose him. First of all, any brothers at all? Right. I have one brother. Okay. I have one brother, and he is. Shaky marriage, good, solid. What? Okay, we'll talk offline. Okay. <laughs> okay. But no, seriously, seriously, I want to know about you. Got married when you were twenty-two, lady. How did, did you? How did you know? Was it a blind faith? Um, whatever you're willing to share, because I'll get Oprah on you. Do you ever think about mm, through this? I don't like it. I'm out. I had it with him. No, I have. Tell me that marriages have bad, not just have bad years. Sometimes marriages have bad decades. Now mm -hmm. I can speak on this, but nobody wants to hear it. So I want to hear from you on glassware and marriage. Glassware, I like things that's kind of unordinary, you know, out of ordinary. 
And if I put it on and I look good to myself, I get it. That's just it. If I look at it and I'm like, dang, girl, you look good. I get it. You know, and I like all different, and, and I never have a problem um, with believing in me or loving him or loving me. Oh. And that, that comes from my parents as well. You know, um, when I was growing up, I used my tongue, I can pronounce certain words. And so my dad said, just practice. My mom, my mom said, you'll get it. You'll get it. You no, know? so they brought talk, they bought talking books. So we I can help help me pronounce words. And, um, I, they, uh, I went to speech, I think maybe three times. I didn't like it. So my dad said, I didn't have to go. So I didn't go back. Um, and then with my husband, um, I, we haven't had any bad years. We've had, I think, one rocky, one rocky year, two rocky years, uh, because we went from, I think, maybe forty dollars or $50,000 down to twelve thousand dollars. That'll so make the marriage rocky. That'll so we, rocky. Yeah, that was a real rocky year, and we had to learn to live. And I wanted to live without my parents knowing or his parents knowing, because Ooh. I loved him, and I didn't want anybody to feel like he wasn't able to provide. And I and both of us was like, he's a pharmacist. He's a pharmacist, and um, uh, I couldn't get a job at the time, and I didn't want to leave. Tal well, he didn't want to leave Tallahassee, and he does not argue under any circumstance. He will not argue. He does not raise his voice. And I tried it because I thought some, I, I didn't want him to wake up one night and all of a sudden <laughs> he just bit gorilla, right? But just the one married brother though. No, just my husband. I know, but in his lineage, <laughs> he's only that one married brother of the no arguing men. He he has another he, he has a brother he he has a brother, but he doesn't argue. He just said that. Um, I don't want the one that argues. Yeah, he right. don't like. No, I'll, does, find, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, he does not argue. He okay. he does not argue for anything, and he's always thankful. He he's thank you for being my wife. Thank you. Uh, we we passed a church together. Thank you for what you give to the church. I mean, it's always I appreciate you. And Dana, it's like, kill. it's like I can sit here and I say, mm, I need some white pants. Next thing I know, coming in the mail through Amazon will be some white pants. I mean, if-, if What about DNA? What about like cloning? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Y'all, where'd she get the man? She said, right? he's the only one. He's, he's, the on, he's the only husband I ever had. He's the only husband I ever want. I and guess what? Him. But check, check, check this out. So I had a dream that we had gotten married, right? That we, he was, and so I told it to him, but we went to the same church. And I told him that um, I had a dream. And he said, oh. Ooh. And he, le he left Tallahassee. <laughs> and he got married to someone else. I mean, not married. He got engaged to someone else. But then he told her, you're not my wife. You're not the one. Yeah. That's what he said. You're not the one. Mm -hmm. And he came back to me. And one of his best friends told me, he said, Gerald like you because you don't run behind him. My dad told us, and my mom, you don't run behind no man. You can get any man you want. Mm -hmm. Don't chase a man. Say, so if they want to go, let them go. Because you 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 can get whoever you want. Yeah, there's one coming right behind him. Probably right three. behind him. <laughs> right behind him. And he- Not he, like yours, though. Oh, man. And, right. I'm like, and some people think I'm lying. They think I'm lying, but I don't. He He's- absolutely fantastic he really is i wouldn't trade him for anything okay he's but, gonna be a guest on the power hour because he needs that man needs a microphone because <laughs> we need yes. we need him to instruct other people and empower and enlighten other men yeah. uh, i mean my real know. talk with judy radio show uh dream he Bibles, Bibles. yeah yeah he, he 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 makes everything happen <laughs> he allowed me to do what yeah. i do <laughs> Kia, I want to give you a shot because you know how Becky, uh, Betsy likes to hog the, the time, but I want to make sure. Mm -hmm. I time right, because I go first. Gosh, you always, <laughs> oh, I tell you. Um, the worst first well, I just, you ever. <laughs> I know. I just wanted you to go a little deeper into um, the Dream Builders. Um, I think it's the Dream Builders Greatness Empire. It's a long, it's long, but can you tell us 
a lot more about it because when I was reading up on it, I was like, this sounds like something that everyone needs to be a part of, you know, men and women. So what is that about? Okay, now the Dream Builders Greatness Center, that, that's where everything lies. And so I yeah. call it the Dream Builders Greatness Center because um, I believe that if someone have a dream, I'm like an architect, right? And so I can get mm -hmm. it and sit down with them and help them map it out. And so mm. Dream Builders Greatness Center, my, my youngest sister, we call her Greatness because Bill Proctor, I did a citywide youth uh, conference here back in about nine, in the nine, 1990s, I think, or late 80s. And um, we had youth from every all over everywhere, over 600 young people participated. And um, he called my, my sister Greatness. And she mm. operates. She operates our daycare, and so I call it Dream Builders, because that's what mm. we have to do. We help people look within themselves. I, I am very careful in telling people what they need to do. I don't do that. I like people to look at their life, and 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 find dreams of what they what they want to do. And then I feel like my responsibility is to help them see it even better and scope it out. And then bring other people in so we can see it. They can see it from different perspectives. And then, then they make their life good, right? So that's that's right. what it is. And so we have the Dream Builders Child Development Center. That's ages six weeks to five. My mom did a, uh, owned a daycare for 45 years and for mm -hmm. a lot of them, 45 years. They named the street after her. And now they have a million dollar YMCA that sits on her street the street that the city named after her, you know? Wow. Uh, and and uh, so we have that. Then I had, I had the summer camp. Then I had a, a, a Dream Builders Leadership a Navigators Academy. Uh, I had, I graduated, I think over 60 adults, adults and just brought them in and taught them leadership from and brought in different people from the city to help. Nothing I do, do I believe I can do by myself. Mm -hmm. I believe God give me the dream and the idea, and then he touch other people to help who connect. And then they can come and help me see it better. Like even with the sister girls, I got LaShawn, G uh, Gina, um, uh, Virginia Daly, Carrie Boyd, um, yeah. Jennifer Powell, uh, all of these people come and they sit with you got all the You got all the big girls. Mm -hmm. and Dana Brooks. All I the mean, big kids. And, and, and we're looking for young young women because yeah. I want to make it so when the young women come, I want I don't want it just to be geared toward the older people, but young women so we can do things. And we all, I always have a DJ because this is what I believe. There's power in dance. Mm -hmm. I believe there's power. And so I always have a DJ and we're always going to do the, the line dances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a wedding oh. reception every time. Right. And, and so that, that's how the dream builders, and then I did dream builders family affair. This is what I believe. And I got this from my family, that if the home is good for whoever live in there, their community will be good. But we can't mm -hmm. tell the people in the home what they need. So before the pandemic, the Lord gave me the dream builders family affair would come from my family because even though there were six of us, my, my parents, we sat down at the dining room table and we laughed and we talked. Every summer we went on vacation, every okay. summer. That's why I thought we were rich, you know, because every summer we went on vacation, um, you know, they gave us a voice in the family. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized earlier, they didn't do nothing with what we said, but at least we had a voice, you know. Um, and my, my mom, and how some people say, you're gonna eat what's put before you. We didn't have to. We didn't have to. She she prepared meals for what we like. And so, mm -hmm. and we each had a week. And if we didn't like what the other person has chosen, there was alternative in the in the refrigerator, like hot dog, bologna, or, or, or something. If that what you want, spaghetti. And so that's where the dream builders family affairs come from. And so I work in this com community. And I, I told them when I die, I want to be empty. I, I want to have given everything Every in me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to give everything. And so I have to connect with people like, like Dana, 
Kia and and uh, Bet Betty Betsy and different people. I I have to because I know I don't have it all here. I sit down Ooh. with Lashawn and, and Lashawn is a killer. So we sit down with these people and they help me think. They help me think. And I sit down with my husband, even with the church. You know, the church. We love our church, and it's like, how can we make this better? And if he tells me what he sees, because he's the same. I take it and I ask God for how to do this. Then I'm watching, watching your buses, you and face the door, those buses all over the place. I've heard your testimony, you know, and I'm like, wow. And it's stuff like that, that, that really inspired me, you know, to really keep going. One day my mom told me, she said, my mom and dad told me when I came to college, because they would send me allowance and I spend it on everybody and turn right back around. I need some more money. When I came home, my mom and dad shut me down. They said, Judy, we are not rich. The money we send for you is for you. We right. can't feed everybody. Right. And it's so not so much for you to use it for what we intended. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. what I started doing, what I started doing, started doing, we would go to Wendy and split a hamburger because I still wanted to feed people, but I couldn't spend up on my money because they weren't going to send me anything. <laughs> that is the dream builders. Um, Kill. That's what Dream Builders is 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 all about. That's awesome. I want to uh, I want to give uh, Betsy an opportunity to ask something, but I want to before we finish, I'm going to ask you this so you know what I'm coming. At. I want to know what your legacy. What do you want your legacy mm. to be? What are your goals and what do you want the world to know about Judy Mandrell when she's gone? But Betsy, try to top that. <laughs> I'm on well, Maverick. Always busting my chops. Um, <laughs> so I, I keep thinking of you as, as a little girl taking things out of your house and giving them away. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. um, wondering, what did your parents think of that? Did they ever did you have that? a couch yesterday? I thought there was a couch here. <laughs> Oh, I know. I probably get, you know, my parents really couldn't say much after I told them the reason why I was doing this. My mom and my dad, to me, were some of the biggest philanthropists there, there were. My mom and my dad always gave to people. They, mm -hmm. they, and, so, and I, that's why I thought I was rich. And I thought I was supposed to do that. I saw them do that. I saw them bring people into our house where we, all of us, all of us children, we saw them bring people into our house. They brought people in there and they fed them. They gave people clothes. So I didn't know that it, you know, and, and they did that. And so it really got down in me. But my sisters and my brother, all of us do the same thing. We, it's like we can't help but give. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like it's in there. And that's because I was raised this way. I tell everybody, I am a product of my environment. I really am. We, we are a product of our environment. And um. I can't even help it. It's, and, and so my dad was so angry with me, but he, he just went in the room. He couldn't say anything, but I was excited, right? When I gave away all that meat, I was excited, <laughs> right? And my mom, my mom came in. She said, Judy, you know, you gave away a whole lot. I said, mom, that's what we do, isn't it? Sure. I said, you know what we do? I said, I seen you and my dad. She was like, yeah, I, I guess you're right. And so they just had to find a way to tell me, you, you, you can't do that, Judy. Yeah. You, you can't, can't give as much as you want to give. And, you know, exactly. Well, it's kind of like that old analogy of, you know, pouring out of yourself like a pitcher. You know, if you don't replenish, there's pretty soon not going to be anything else you can pour out. So you got to always wonder where that's coming from. Um, anything else, Betsy? <laughs> no, I think I'll be quiet in my cockpit for a few minutes and let you <laughs> Continue your questioning. <laughs> yeah, what, but I'll chime in. I'll chime in if I think of something. <laughs> what are your goals, um, uh, Pastor Judy? Like for the Sister Girl Network, what are you hoping to accomplish there? What's it going to look like in six months, five years, that sort of thing? Or do you want it just to kind of grow on its own? What are your thoughts uh, on your goals? My, my goal, I want to be intentional as far as uniting us together regardless, I, I, I don't want us to come together and, and, and be hesitant about sharing how we feel. Mm -hmm. I, I want us to, to be able to come together. Dana, this was, I would like this to come together and, and, and 
uh, one of the black ladies said, I really don't know why white people think like that. Like what? No, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know what it's gonna be like, but I'm just saying, if they had, if they wanted to know, they could come into that company. Yeah, just open dialogue. With, with, kind without, of without feeling, y'all help me, without feeling. Yeah, you wanna be able to ask something and someone or, go, oh, why would you ask that? You must. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there has to be a way to, to, to talk about things and have an open and frank discussion and get honest answers if we would just put down our guards real quick and go, yeah, yeah. That. she wasn't trying to offend me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. ignorant. Exactly. She's here to learn. So let's all take advantage of that instead of what happens right. a lot of times is I'm in my camp and I'm like, can you believe she said that? I can't believe she did that. And then that becomes the focus instead yep. of mm -hmm. what are we really trying to do? And that's understand each other. Yeah. And, 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 and be able just to talk in, uh, but I see it, it has to be intentional. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that when I say that you're my sister, I call you sister girl. That means mm -hmm. that there's a certain trust there. Right. That I, I have your back. Exactly. And, and and I'm able to validate your that make you understand that your feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. That I believe in you. That's what I do with my sisters. Oh, right. my my other sister. That's what I have with them. You know. And if we disagree. We're able to disagree and 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 sometimes get angry with each other. Mad. Yeah. But it doesn't separate us. Yeah. So that's what I see. You know, we got so, so much hate. And, and I don't want it to be, okay, I want to use you because you're smart. Okay, I got what I got from you. And I don't need you anymore. I don't want that. Right. I see us really coming together as a, as a big unit. Uh, sister girl, I can feel you. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, uh, if somebody called, because... Sister Girl is the hub, and we got all these different women organizations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they ask for Sister Girls, they're asking for all of us. Yeah. They're, they're asking for the empowerment. They're asking for the Caitlin John Lewis. They're asking for the Barbara Westcott and the Working Class Wins. They're asking for the Janet Clary. They're asking for all these different women groups, right? They, they ask the Oasis Center. They're asking for all of us. Uh, right. The Young Women of Excellence. They're asking for everybody in the sister girl and that's what i said and i and because they're um i know um that some of the women have experienced some things they know they wouldn't have experienced it. they wouldn't have been a part of the sister girls network no no um, uh, one of one of the ladies one of the young ladies uh, from the homeless shelter she came and she she was going back telling everybody i ate at the mayor's house i went to the mayor mm -hmm. house for a christmas party they're like you lying she said, I ain't lying. She said, I went to the mess. She said, and I got Dr. Judy Mandrell phone number. They were like, you lying. Because I'm, I'm part of the Big Ben Homes Coalition uh, Board of Directors. And I went out there and she called. She said, yo, Dr. Judy, tell them this you. I said, this me. And they were like, no, it's not you. I'm like, yes, it is. That's wonderful. You know, and, and that's what it, you know, take them to Harry's, take people, or either bring people over. We had some people to come eat with me at Leo's Crab Shack. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have never come over there if they hadn't been a part of the sister. I want us to experience each other's life. Right. I want us to experience it without feeling like I'm way up here and you're right. way down here right. with your sisters. Mm -hmm. And my sister's in, my sister in Scotland is starting one. My sister in Fort Lauderdale, friend in, in Texas, another one in Atlanta. These mm -hmm. women want it. And so we want to, then one day we're going to have a big sister girl. And I want to have her here in Tallahassee. We're going to have a retreat, Dana, here in Tallahassee first with the women here in Tallahassee. Yep. You know, I, I want to say. Because here's the thing. It is really hard to maintain a hate to something you know and can identify with. It's oh, really mm -hmm. easy to Ooh. hate things you don't know about, you don't understand, you think you know, you've made judgments about. That's a real easy uh, attitude to maintain. Yeah. But once yeah. you really expose yourself and you realize this person who I think is so different than me is not different than me at all. We, we ate, eat the same food, we have the right. same problems, right. we talk about the same issues. We just kind of had a little different orientation, but not really. You know, I, mm -hmm. I think, well, I always believe this education and exposure is an antidote to any bad yeah. thing like hate yeah. or judgment or ill will. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't have a whole lot of time, but I want to uh, wrap up giving Kia an opportunity and then, of course, finishing last with the most important person on the panel, and that's Betsy. 
Uh, Kia, Kia. I love it. I love it. So with every great business, you know, there's always succession programs, right? I guess I'm kind of from listening to everything, just like how Dana stated, when you leave here, who do you envision or what what person, meaning personality or what have you, do you envision passing that torch to? Great question. That's a great question. Um, uh, actually, I, I, my, my sisters, and then some of the people who are working with me now, just different ones, I've seen their heart. Mm-hmm. And I, I am pulling and praying that they will catch a hold of this. And I figured down a few years from now, then I say, hey, look, and, and you know what I would like to do is pass the leadership of it before I get crippled, right. can't understand. So at least I'd be able to advise and, and, mm-hmm. and make sure that it's continuing. I don't think one person is going to be able to do it. And I think it's going to be a plethora of people oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. uh, who will be able to carry this on all across the world. In every, in every city. I want to see it in every city. I really yeah. do. And it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. We can right. disagree. We can do all of that. It doesn't matter. You're my sister. Agreed. Right? Those, that Republican, Democrat, those are manufactured, uh, externally imposed mm-hmm. uh, constructs that divide people. Yes. It's easier to manage people when you can pit them against each other. So mm-hmm. always be thinking, who benefits from me being in this box? Who benefits from me being labeled? Uh, wow. Judy, not you. Um, so what would that look like, Judy? Uh, you say you would want the Sister Girl Network to be in every city, in every place. I mean, um, what would that look like? Do you have some generals, some lieutenants you've enlisted in, in your cause? Have you gotten that far? How long has Sister Girl Network been up? Oh, we've, mm-hmm. been, we've been up since uh, 2019. Okay. We just we just got up. I just got our five hundred one c three. I think two months ago, a month ago, um, and and I hadn't thought about that. Someone was meeting with me, and I was telling them what I want to do. They were like, "Let's go for our five hundred one c 3 And I love when I love when people say ours. That that mm. it, it let me know that we got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 got it. And you you know what else I learned? I learned that. Uh, the, the way uh, Wonder Woman came about as a superhero, the guy who did it, I forgot his name, but they didn't want, he was, he didn't want another uh, superhero who fought or used weapon. He wanted to use love. So he created Wonder Woman. Mm. And I when I saw that, I was like, there it is. So we, we kill everything with pure love of what women mm. do. And so I would love to leave it in the hands of somebody who loved unconditionally. Wow, you are leaving one hell of a big pair of shoes. Right? <laughs> don't, don't leave anytime soon, ladies. You got a lot of work to do, but, but uh, I'm free, I, I, I want to look into some succession planning. Just, just <laughs> um, uh, Betsy, let's close today with your comments or questions. Yeah, so... Dr. Mandrell, you you spend a lot of time with the younger generation of women coming up. Uh, I want to ask you, what is one thing you um, have observed that concerns you and one that encourages you? Mm. One, one, one thing that, that concerns me is that sometimes the younger generation, they're, they're so gung-ho, they don't like to listen sometimes mm-hmm. to the older generation because they think we're just so old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what encourages me is the ambition and the desire that they have to do so much better and to change this world. That encouraged me. Yeah. And I think that if the two can come together, it's, it's a, a generation, we're building a, gener- a transgenerational body. We need the older, we need the younger. Yeah. The Bible says he called the old because they're wise and the younger because they're strong. And just mm-hmm. like Betsy, you, you and Dana and Kill, you know, uh, I see you sitting in the cockpit. Dana's the pilot, mm-hmm. and y'all co pilots, but mm-hmm. we're going to land, and, and then I come on, we're going to land the plane together. Yeah. 
And so that's encouragement to me. I love Solid that. Plain metaphor. Way to close. Right. <laughs> Well, Pastor Judy, Dr. Judy Mandrell, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your inspiration every day, all day. And thank you for your faith and humanity and your fellow man and woman. Uh, it gives me a lot of hope and inspiration. Uh, and you're exactly right. We need the young people for their strength and their initiative and their um, belief <laughs> that everything will work out great. And we need the people who've lived a few more years who have learned from the lessons, who if the younger people will listen, we can impart a lot of good uh, stuff to you guys. But what we need is a crusader like you mm -hmm. to keep everything going and keep everybody interested and never lose sight of the goal. And that is bring up everybody, make everybody uh, better. And, and so just potentiate one another. You are such a, a lucky person in many ways because of you, how you were raised. That's not yeah. a common story. It's just not, yeah. I wish it were. And I, right. I think that should be a goal too, but uh, thank goodness you had the parents you had who told mm -hmm. you there's nothing outside of your reach and, and a father who sounded like the OG feminist. So I want to, right. uh, but uh, thank you for making time. I know you're so busy uh, in your ministry and in everything else you do, all your other outreach. So thank you for making time with us today at the Empower Hour, Dr. Judy Mandrell. Thank you everyone for watching the Empower Hour brought to you by the Empower Plant by Facing Brooks Personal Injury Lawyers. And we will see you again next Thursday. It's going to be hard to top this, but I'm going to put mm -hmm. all the people around here to work and we're going to try to give you something just as <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>